Everybody, Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank here in Northern Idaho, putting the final touches on a 775 gallon step down tank. Nearly done, got a little couple things to do. So what you see is 98% of the way finished. Wanted to give you a walkthrough of it this Saturday morning so you see how this thing has come together. Last time you all saw it, it was empty. Now it's full. Let's give you a sense of perspective. 12 feet across the top, 48 inches top to bottom on the deep end. 30 inches on the shallow end, tank is 36 inches front to back that way. Sits on a 40 inch tall steel stand. Planet Aquariums built this tank. They're the only people that I would trust to build this kind of tank. They're the only people that I use for all my tanks as well. Lots of experience with those guys. I trust them 100%. So this is a step down tank. We have a deep end and we have a shallow end. The idea here is that we're going to put sea anemones and clownfish here. And people say, well, wait, how do you know they're gonna stand still? We don't, we're gonna hope for the best and hope that they hang out down here in the deep end. That may change, but that's the idea we're going for at the moment. So a big tank like this, you need lots of access. How are you gonna get in and access your tank? Well, through the canopy, of course, but not just any canopy. This canopy is built so that it is 100% hinged off the top. Nothing touches the tank in terms of casework here or any vertical. So when the owner wants to work with a tank, they have 100% access across all edges of the tank. Now this is a room divider tank. I'll show you the other side in a minute, but these doors open up and you don't have any stays on these doors either. They'll stay wherever we want them to go. Put them here, put them here, they all stay. Angle, the client had a good idea about putting a piece of angle iron on these doors as well. So when this comes down, this meets right there. That provides a trap if, if a fish hits this, they're not gonna fall in here and get stuck. They're gonna flop back into the tank. Thought that was a great idea. Thinking about the owner. Now, what is this thing lit by? We have 10 XR10, XR30 Radeon G4 Pros made by Ecotech Marine, and then some T5s by Reef Bright. T5s are just there to add a little supplemental lighting. They're not something that I'm relying on for coral growth. This whole light rack is driven off a linear actuator. So this goes up and down by a touch of a button which is nice to give you access. He wants to get in here and work, flip up the doors. He has access, roll this up 20 inches, 24 inches is total run height. And he has even more access into the tank. Now, let me show you the other side of the tank. So you get a sense of perspective on how this thing's going to fit together. This side, this is going to be the work room, kind of the lounge area for the uh, commercial office space. So when the employees are sitting here, relaxing, brainstorming, they get to look at this edge of the tank. Now they're gonna come around the corner here. Here's the front entrance to the building. When someone comes into the building, there's gonna be a barn door here. So they're gonna come in and they're gonna go, oh, look, a fish tank, that's kind of cool. And the more they look at it, the more they come around, then they come on this edge and they get 12 feet of reef tank goodness. Here, this is the barn door for the owner suite. This opens up, the owner sits here. This is his office and his desk will be about here-ish. So this is his view of the tank. We have the same canopy doors on this side, so these open up to give him access. So we can flip all these doors up, including the door on the end to get access to the tank. Now, how are we gonna get flow around this thing? We have Ecotech Marine MP60 on either side. We have a mass spec gyre down here on this end. And then on the step-down section, we have two Ecotech Marine MP40s down here providing flow to the deep end. How do you escape such a thing like this? Well, there's a plate here that I glued in with pins that holds the row reef rock in place. Some people say, well, why didn't you go more of an arch and then come down here? Well, the owner wanted to have the lower section, the rock work up here, not touch down here. So we left a gap. We maybe could have come out more like this, but I wanted to have lots of open space for fish to swim. We're thinking of School of Antheus. 30 to 40 antheus in here hanging out on the current. So we wanted to have more negative space in the deep end of the tank. So that's how we escape the thing. Now, any fish tank like this needs life support running it. So there's some life support here. This is mainly where the electronics go. This is still a work in progress, so we're not done yet. Don't judge, we're still working on this section. All these pipes run into the fish room, which are just over here. There's a light to the fish room. Let me walk you through here so you get a sense of what it takes to drive this tank. Now this has been about a year and change project that we've been working on. 
between client buying the building, remodeling the building, they gutted this whole building, and of course did the right thing, which is to plane it all around the fish tank, because the fish tank should be the center of any house, any commercial building. Let's face it, it's all about the fish tank. All right, so we come around the corner here. Here is the fish room. This was built specifically for the life support on this tank. We have a floor drain down here in the corner. So if any water hits the floor, it goes that way. We laser the room, water naturally flows that direction. Of course, you need a sink in a fish room. We have that as well. So water comes through the holes here from the fish tank. The fish tank is just over there to give you a sense of perspective. Water comes into the refugium. This is a planet aquarium's tank that we modified and built in as a refugium. Water flows through here and into the MRC industrial sump. This is my design that I'm continually refining. We have filter stocks here, world exclusive Bubble King uh, Deluxe 300 skimmer. Red Dragon return pump drives all the water through the media reactors. Of course, we have a Neptune Systems Trident because if you're going to run a tank, you got to have it automated. Water comes through the Aqualogic inline heater, runs back along the ceiling. Some water comes into the UV and then some goes back out into the fish room. If you're gonna have this type of tank, you need water. So we have a mixing station on this side of the room and sitting in a, a drip tray. So if water happens to drip out or overflow, it gets caught in the tray. Of course, I have a water on floor sensor there with the apex, so I'll know it will shut everything down. 210 gallons of salt water mixing, 210 gallons of RODI water. Now you're gonna make that much water. You can't wait for it to make 75 gallons a day. So we have a supercharged Spectre Pure 200 gallons per day ultra high efficiency system. This makes one part of RODI water and only waste one part of wastewater. And this thing is fully automated. It turns itself on and on, on and off based on water levels in here. And it also flushes itself automatically and the apex gets secondary control over it. So if there's a leak or the owner wants to make water on demand, uh, he can do it based off of the apex. Speaking of on demand, we have our on demand RODI water. Some test kits need you to use rinse your material with RODI water, dilute with RODI water. He's got that. So that's there as well. Now, even though we have a floor drain in here and we've epoxy the floor, the refugium and the sump both sit on aluminum stands and they both sit in trays. These are drained such that if there's an overflow, water flows down here. It doesn't actually hit the floor. We plumbed it into the wall. So this is a drain system that runs underneath these things. So if there is an overflow, we should never get there, but if it does happen, water flows away and into a drain. This whole thing is controlled by a Neptune Systems Apex. All up here, we have a dose for automatic water changes. Uh, whirl, we have both control boxes for the return box here, the return pump, and then the skimmer is up here. Kessels drive the refugium growth, the algae growth in the refugium. And of course, we have my famous, oh shit switch. Something goes wrong, you hit this, the whole thing shuts down, the owner and myself get an alert. Now this whole control panel is hinged. What we have to do is take out this screw and this whole thing hinges down so we can get behind here and run cords. Like if you had to replace probes or anything like that, you don't have to worry about trying to get your hand back here and get it through this hole. Drop the screw, the whole thing folds down and you have 100% access to the tank. So there you go. There's a walkthrough of the 775 gallon step down tank. A little touch up work to do. For now, I gotta go catch a plane. I'll go home for 24 hours, and then I'm on to the next system. Thanks everyone for being with me on a Saturday morning. Have a great rest of your weekend.